So this messy looking circuit is the uh, connection of an HT12E encoder and then connected via wired connection. I don't have the wireless working yet to an HT12D decoder. Okay, right now they're both addressed to the same uh, to the same address, which is essentially leaving all the address pins floating, and that's the that would be uh, zero 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 whatever. Um, so now what we should be able to do is um, change some of the inputs. Right now I have them floating, which is a uh, low logic. Okay, you can see all the LEDs are off right now. So I'm going to take one of these uh, one of these inputs and I'm going to switch it to ground. And you can see now one of the LEDs has lit up. Okay, I'm going to move that back to floating. Take a second one. Move that to ground and now you can see the second LED is um, lighting up. Now uh, we can scope a couple things here. So the first thing that we're going to scope is we're going to take a look at the D out from the uh, encoder and you can see that right there it's encoding. Uh, the reason why it's encoding is because the TE pin is connected to ground which enables the encoding. If I pull it out and make it floating, you'll see the encoding stops. I'll connect it back to ground if I can find it. And now it starts to encode again. All right, next we can see uh, the output of the VT pin from the decoder. Right now it's high because we do have a valid transmission coming through. But what I can do to stop the transmission is either remove the TE pin uh, from ground and make it floating, right? That makes our transmission stop. Another thing that I can do is I can change, I put the TE pin back to ground by the way. Another thing that I can do is I can change the address on the encoder by grounding one of the pins. So I'll do that. And again, now you can see um, the encoding no longer uh, works. Now one funny thing we can see about the way that the, that the decoder works is that, okay, right now I, set, I reset the addresses so they work. Um, so I can turn off the, um, the LED by removing the pin uh, for the second input and making it float. Okay, it turns off. I'll turn it back on by grounding it again. Now what happens to that LED when I change the address? So I'll take this wire here and I'll just simply plug it into one of the, it's a grounded wire, I'll simply plug it into one of the address pins. So now we no longer have a transmission going through, but you'll see that the um, LED stays in its final state. Now it no longer reacts to changes in that pin. So if I take it out, it stays the same. If I put it back in, it stays the same. I can take this one right here, which corresponds to the first LED. I can take it out and ground it and there's no change. So um, when the transmission stops, it doesn't necessarily mean that the data outputs will all go to 0000, zero, zero, zero or 1111. One, one, one. Essentially they keep whatever the last status um, was.